it's going to be a, first of all, uh, it depends who will be our next president. That is the, the crucial question. Uh, I think it, at least that's the way I see it. In order to obtain certain results, we will have to uh, go outside the political uh, arena. So who are you uh, suggesting that uh, might uh, fill the shoes that would help us, uh, help our cause? Uh, I won't uh, give names. Okay. That's too early in the game, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's a fluctuating uh, scenario. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't uh, go. There are people, that, but they have, in my opinion, in order to obtain uh, viable results and uh, real results, we will have to go this time totally outside the political arena and uh, do not choose anybody who has been uh, connected one way or the other to the uh, administration and to the, uh, the what I call the gang of Washington. Uh-huh, right, right. That's absolutely uh, out of, because then we will go uh, back uh, to the same game and with the same kind of disaster results. Yeah, we would we would agree with that. Um, again, I still keep wondering what could the right president do, because if uh, we're going to get the right president, we've got to kind of give him an idea of what we want from him. Uh, okay, then I will go directly to the to the, the question you, or to the answer you are looking for, uh, without any ranking or order in what should be done. Uh, should first of all. Uh, Put the relationship with Israel on a normal uh, footing. Secondly, uh, sit down with uh, Vladimir Putin or whoever is in charge at that moment uh, in Russia, and then start to win back ex-allies who today have been totally uh, surprised by the, uh, the treatment they received uh, from our administration. And here I'm talking about Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the entire uh, uh, peninsula there, uh, Kuwait, uh, Oman, Trashel Coast, and things like that. All those people have they've seen the, the moment uh, Mubarak was thrown under the bus, they realized that the uh, United States was just plain words and uh, nothing else, and that they wouldn't step in uh, to the plate and do what was supposed to be done. I think that this this is the let's say the the things which have to be done in immediately when the new administration comes into place. And first of all, most uh, important is that whoever is going to be the president, because the president as such is not the, the, the crucial or the the, the the main point. It's the admin the the, the cabinet. The, people he surrounds himself with. Right. And in my opinion, the key uh, players will have to be designated as uh, uh, in the DOD, Department of Defense, uh, State Department, uh, and uh, the intelligence community. The intelligence community is totally uh, in this way today. Yeah, I, I, in fact, think that one of the criteria for the next president is certainly for him to announce who he's going to have surrounding him and to promise that he is going to go through our government and get rid of all of the appointments exactly. that Obama has made in these past six, seven, eight years. <laughs> no, but you see, in my opinion, what we should be doing, or what the, the, the president, the next president should be doing, is having the people he surrounds himself with sign a pledge that they will not deviate from what they from the promises. Yeah. That would be and great, no wouldn't it? Otherwise they will be sent packing home. Yeah, and, and in fact there is there is a poison in the water that surrounds Washington. When people get there they change. They change almost immediately. I mean we we, we had some historic elections, 2010, 2014, where we the people thought that we were building a Republican conservative majority, and even some of our friends immediately turned into establishment Republicans who are following this mantra towards war, actually. In fact, your paper says that war is more likely, not less likely. Can you expand upon that a little bit? Yes, but Coming back to uh, the change that people uh, make when they
they uh, hit uh, Washington. It's not, not, uh, it's not surprising. You see, uh, it's, uh, when they got there, they, they go there, I would say, with good intentions. And then uh, immediately uh, the old gangs uh, surround them and they say, look, don't make waves. Uh, but the system works. Uh, you will see that uh, at the end of the day you will uh, be sitting at the table and you will get a piece of the cake. And uh, that is when uh, the people change and uh, become what they are right now. That definitely. Uh, what did, I'm sorry, I forgot what the, your original question was. Well, I, I just I said that in the paper it says that war is more likely, not yes. less likely. Mm -hmm. And I, that concerns me, of course, because um, is it inevitable that we're going to have a World War III? I do not believe that we will get to that point if the right people are chosen under the, in 2016. Uh, I have great uh, hope and uh, trust in uh, human intelligence. Good. Will, it's, not, uh, it's not inevitable. And I do not believe uh, that uh, Vladimir Putin has any desire of a uh, world conflict. It's not in his interest. You see, what he's trying to do, as I said before, he is uh, trying to rebuild the old Russian uh, to the Tsars. You see, he's opening to the Russian Orthodox Church, uh, which some people did not understand, and they thought it was uh, uh, theatrical and uh, it was not uh, real genuine. I, I dispute that. I think he is genuinely... Uh, I mean, you have to understand. Okay, people say, oh, but he's uh, an ex-KGB. And then so what? Uh, Bush uh, was ex-agency uh, also. So what? I don't understand that you... That, that the stigma that you, uh, you you put on on people connected to the intelligence community is, in my opinion, totally uh, misplaced. Mr. Brushwaller, this is Phil Stargell. Uh You said that you didn't think that there would be a uh, a third world war, but maybe uh, the time frame. There there are things that could happen in a certain time frame that would trigger, such as. If Iran were to be able to uh, procure a nuclear device and put it on Israel, I'm sure that that would trigger the Third World War. No. I'm you don't think so? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll try to. Uh, I've gone through that scenario uh, a couple of times with other people. Uh, and uh, I think that my way of looking at it is the correct way. Now, let's just say as a. Uh, as an example, uh, first of all, I do not believe that uh, Iran would be foolish enough because they went through that game as well. So let's assume that they go and they do that foolish movement and they uh, send uh, an attack, a nuclear attack on, uh, on Israel. Israel will retaliate and they are capable. I mean, uh, there are, I mean, there's no secret. Uh, uh, Israel has, has the capacity and the means to deliver uh, a response to Iran immediately. Now, by the time that response tri is triggered, Iran will go the next step. And what they will do, they will attack the, uh, Saudi Arabia, but not the Saudis as such, but our bases, our army and air force base in Saudi Arabia. And that will bring us into, willingly or unwillingly, into the conflict. But it will not be a world conflict. It will be a regional contained uh, skirmish. I would put it that way. Well, Wallace, that's why I'm saying it seems to me that nuclear destruction anywhere yeah. results in nuclear destruction everywhere. everywhere. No, no, but it, you see, uh, today it's not, we're not going... Uh, to the extent of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we're doing. Uh, there are now uh, sophisticated nuclear devices which are. Uh, okay, it, that scenario limit, that. Limit, bigger pun. Yeah, uh, that scenario that you, that you just completed. Yes. Um, you know, we're talking of regional nuclear war, 
but wouldn't it be more advisable to have conventional nu- uh, conventional war in a region than, than nuclear war? The reason why uh, the reason why it's so hard to have that is because I personally believe that that uh, the policy that George Bush proceeded uh, that was was proceeding with would have had conventional war in that region. Uh, but uh, there, there was such a backlash at George Bush that, uh, that he had to back off. And, and so what we got now is the Obama administration putting a deal together that is much more favorable to Iran and the, their allies than it is to us. And it, it almost assures at least a regional nuclear conflict than, than anything proposed after a conventional well, conflict. I think, uh, I think you're right to the point that says that it would, it would generate a conflict, but I do not go to the, what you call the nuclear. The way you understand nuclear is uh, we're talking about, I think, uh, if I don't misunderstand you, we're talking about uh, nuclear devices of the magnitude of uh, uh, Nagasaki, Hiroshima. Oh, okay. it's not, it's not, that, that is long gone. We, we have now uh, sophisticated... Uh, and look, it can be nuclear or it can be chemical mm-hmm. uh, warfare. Uh, but it will be... Uh, I insist, <laughs> I'll come back. It will be, in my opinion, and from what I hear... Uh, in the Middle East, it will be uh, a local conflict. Wallace, will you stay with us after the break? We have a couple of important messages that we need to get to. No problem. Thank you so much. My yes, pleasure. the song is Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. <laughs> and <laughs> that's the truth, but it's no small price that Iran paid for this influence and no small price that we'll pay to get our country back. We'll be back after these breaks.